for Marie Johnson. God bless you.
Okay, Josh, we got a problem. Good morning. <laughs> I took this off so I could wipe my eyes. See, where I used to be a preacher, I, I thought I had it made clear to the music director, before I speak, you do not have an emotional solo. <laughs> so how does this go on like this? See, so my glasses are getting Can in the way. Can you put that on and then glass over top? This is new to me. Clip on, fine. This is fine. This is new. I love COVID. We've done, all right, now what? This is just not going to work. Okay, now I put the glasses on. This. Okay. <coughs> Good morning. <laughs> it is my privilege to be here as we worship our living God. I am Reverend Roberta Arrowsmith. Everybody knows me as Bobby. I just retired February 1st after 30 years of ministry. I served the Newtown Presbyterian Church in Bucks County for um, many years, and then I went up to Union, New Jersey, to um, Connecticut Farms Presbyterian Church, and everybody thought I was moving to Connecticut at that time. I said, no, it's in New Jersey, because in the 1600s, farmers from Connecticut came down to Jersey, saw our beautiful state, thought it looked like Connecticut, and called it Connecticut Farms. Um, so they said I had to wear this so the people in Texas can hear me. So hello, Texas, from the great state of New Jersey. Because <laughs> I am a Jersey girl, born and bred. Um, and uh, so anyway, it's my pleasure to be here with you. I actually live in Milford, New Jersey now, temporarily, hoping to get to Florida at some point when housing drops so I can buy a house near my daughter and her family. But in the meantime, I'm living in the manse. Milford Presbyterian Church Manse because Linda Bullock, Reverend Linda Bullock, is a very dear friend of mine. She lived at my house while she went to seminary at Newtown for 10 years and then got her call to Milford and moved out. So now I moved into Milford. So it's good to be here with you. And if uh, the way be clear, I will be seeing you for several Sundays um, to pulpit supply. So welcome. Um, now, for announcements, I would suggest you read through the bulletin, and uh, I don't know how many of you have email, but I got a beautiful email newsletter from your church, and you have so many things going on. I mean, there's a food pantry, and there's a couple of activities for adults, and there's these wonderful things. Uh, so look through the bulletin, because they talk about the events, the women's, well, there's, a whole, the, there's an opera concert uh, coming up next Sunday. Um, seniors community yoga and lunch that sounds wonderful um, thought I might attend that um, the Boy Scout meeting the a meetings and there's just all other things so um, please read through now are there any announcements that I'm missing yes in the back And, and directions, right? Yes. And yes, yes. Okay, great, wonderful. Anything else? Yes, Bill. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. And what was that name again? Mary That's what the flowers are for. Okay. Yes, Bill. Yes. She's sitting up there right now. <coughs> and I would suggest tissues if you have them. 
because she's doing uh, a lot of really beautiful music. There's a bomb in Gilead and so forth. I mean, we started out with the beautiful His Eyes on the Sparrow, so it's just wonderful. Um, anything else? Well, then let us go into our call to worship. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us. God, our God, has blessed us. Let us worship the living God. Let us pray. Gracious and merciful Lord, thank you that you promise us that where two or three are gathered, you are there in the midst. Lord, we welcome you amongst us today and celebrate the gift of life that you have lavished upon each of us. We ask that you would open our ears that we may hear your voice. Open our minds that we may receive your eternal wisdom. Open our spirits so that we may know your leading and guidance. And open our hearts so that we may receive your wonderful love. We have come to worship you in the glorious name of Jesus. Amen. If we say we are without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not within us. Let us humbly yet boldly come before our God with our prayer of confession. Let us do our litany prayer. O Trinity of love, one God, and perfect community. Where there is falseness. Where there is coldness. And make us one. O oh God, bring new life where we are worn and tired, new love where we have turned hard-hearted, forgiveness where we have wounded, and the joy and freedom of your Holy Spirit where we are the prisoners of ourselves. Says die to show God's love, such great kindness, such great mercy. in a position to condemn only Christ and Christ died for us Christ rose for us Christ reigns in power for us Christ prays for us my friends hear and believe God's good news in Jesus Christ we are forgiven amen the peace of Christ be with you all Please extend to one another the peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. Oh, thank you. Well, we'll wait and see. Where, where? Oh, Maddie's over there. I thought she'd be sitting up here. Do you bring us back together with music or <laughs> or do I say something? Yeah, I know, I know it, it, where it used to be. Do you would just kind of start, the choir would sing, you know, he is love. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's okay, you can continue your conversations in coffee hour. Do we now sing this? Or is that it? Oh, okay. Got, I'll know next time. Okay. Asks, receives, the one who seeks, finds, and the one who knocks, the door will be open. Yes, here she comes. <laughs>
Thank you. <clears throat> and actually, now I don't really need to preach because you got the gist of the sermon and the scripture. Thank you. Uh, except you went a different direction, which was wonderful, and then I'm going to be going. So here we go. We are jumping back into the Gospel of John, chapter 5, verses 1 through 9. Um, and you're going to hear the story again that Barbara told so beautifully. After this, there was a festival of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now in Jerusalem, by the Sheep Gate, there was a pool called in Hebrew, Bethesda, which has five porticles. In these lay many invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed. One man there had been there ill for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had been there a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. And while I am making my way, someone else steps down ahead of me. Jesus said to him, Stand up, take your mat, and walk. At once the man was made well, and he took up his mat and began to walk. Now that day was a Sabbath. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our strength and redeemer. Amen. Excuse me, I'm going to make this Bible now a little bit even. I don't have my sermon like this. Wait a minute. One moment, please. Take a number. Sign in, please. Your expected wait time for the next representative is 20 minutes. Yeah, we've all been there, right? As you're screaming, representative, representative. Waiting seems just to be another part of our everyday life. Be it in the doctor's office, the grocery store checkout, the motor vehicle department, particularly if you live in North Jersey, the fast food line, the emergency ward, on the phone waiting for a human being. We've all had the experience of waiting and what, in what has seemed an unreasonably long time. Waiting takes patience. Try being at a red light for a while. Takes patience. Waiting can be a form of art, such as the case in the gentleman in the pool called Bethesda. Now, this has got to be the absolute record for waiting. 38 years. 38 years this man, an invalid, has spent his days lying on a stretcher beside the pool of Bethesda in Jerusalem. You would have thought after 38 years he could have rolled himself in. But anyway, I don't want to judge. 38 years. The pool, now here's where we're going to explain this. See, this, we now know something they did not. And of course, this is what we learn, we pastors learn when we do research for a sermon. 
The pool contains what geologists call an intermittent spring. And from time to time, geological forces within the Earth convulse and force water to bubble up to the surface. Not knowing back then in Jesus' time the natural origin of this phenomenon, the people at that time and place have come to see this disturbance in the surface of the pool as miraculous. And as Barbara said, they believe it to be the sign of a passing angel, winging invisibly over the water. And if a sick person could make it into the pool before the ripples disappear, or so goes the, the folklore of that time, the wisdom of that time, there's a very good chance that person would be healed and because it would be brushed by the angel's wing. And that would cause the healing of the person. Now, I want you, I know this is a Sunday morning, and I know you've just had a wonderful breakfast, which when we have a lot of food, we want to go sleep. But stay awake with me for a while. And I, even though I'm going to ask you to close your eyes, because I'm going to want you to picture this scene. I want you to imagine this scene in Jerusalem with these pools with five porticles and hundreds of people wanting to be healed. Now, I know that each one of you, at some point in time, even physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, have needed or wanted to be healed. So imagine the scene. Imagine it. Close your eyes. Hundreds surrounding the pool, waiting for that moment when the waters begin to swirl because you think an angel is passing by. The slightest burp from the water, from the hidden spring, is enough to start a stampede. Are you imagining this? Do you see it in your eye? And then once in a great while. And when that happens, everybody rushes forward. And once in a great while, some lucky person gets to stand up, throw their crutches away, and puts their hands up and shouts, I have been healed. More often, though, than not, the whole company of sick cease their splashing around in the water because it has now become calm. And so they get back out and they take their places waiting for the next time. Now, can you imagine that in your eyes' mind? It's a wild scene. Just imagine the water starts bubbling and everybody rushing forward. In the Gospel of John, the writer plays it for its maximum effort. Jesus happens to be there one day and spies this one particular man lying on a stretcher. This man's 38-year paralysis is so severe, he cannot pull himself up onto his feet or get himself enough momentum, let alone make it to the pool. So he just lies there hoping upon hope that some kind soul will pick him up and carry him or drag him and put him in the pool. Or so he says. It's been 38 years. Is it possible that after 38 years, he's pretty much given up? The place feels pretty familiar. The company of fellow sufferers is congenial, kind of in a particular fashion. And from time to time, some kind passerby drops a coin in his cup. It's a life he's used to. What he is not used to, and let's be fair, none of us would be, what he's not used to is having some stranger stopping by to chat with him about his motivation. Of course, we're, we're talking about Jesus. He stands at the foot of the man's cot examining his circumstances. Then he looks him directly in the eye and earnestly into his eyes and says, do you want to be healed? Do you want to be made well? Now for us, that seems like a rhetorical question. Of course I want to be made well. Does he really? It is not a question that invalids, that that invalid or any invalid is used to hearing, for it is plain to everyone who sees him lying there on a stretcher day by day, year by year, that's how he spends his day, by the pool of Bethesda. You would think, of course he wants to be made well. It seems clear to everyone except Jesus, who has all knowledge. Truly, though, even Jesus knows 
why this man is there, that he's an invalid. So yes, Jesus' question sounds rhetorical. However, Jesus' question can be taken at face value. Sure, the man spends all his days in a place of waiting to get into the pool, waiting to be made well. But he has long since given up hope that his healing is actually going to happen. Little remains of his hope but an empty shell. He is just keeping up appearances. Do you want to be made well? Do you want to be made well? For once, that obvious question is not so obvious. For once, this professional invalid turns his questioning eye inward. Now, um, we all think, I mean, this was a yes or no question Jesus asked him. A yes or no. Do you want to be made well? Yes or no. So we all think that's a simple yes, right? It's a yes or no question. Surely the invalid would quickly say yes, but you notice he didn't. He started his whine. Well, sir, I have been here for 38 years, and I, you know, I can't get myself to the pool, and nobody, blah, 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 blah. And Jesus cuts him off and says, stand up, pick up your mat, and walk. He's made healed, just like that. Imagine everybody around him knowing that this man has been sick for 38 years, telling a paralyzed man, get up and walk. For a brief second, anybody who heard him had to say, well, first he asked a stupid question, and now he's telling him a stupid statement, get up and walk. Yet the man is so shocked, he does exactly that. And with his first step, he is healed. Do you want to be made well? Do you want to be made well? Far from being a no-brainer sort of remark, the question is quite profound. For the truth is, not everyone who is sick wants to be healed. Sometimes illness looks better than health. Every counselor, every doctor can tell you a tale without end of people who come in to talk, who seek help, who seek treatment, but when a breakthrough happens, and a solution is found, the client never returns. Some people like not being well. It's comfortable. It's what they know. Now, even our brains, scientists have found out that our brains, we get used to something. We get comfortable with something. And when you try to change your habit, it's a shocker for your brain. And after you are doing this, you're changing your habit, you're changing your habit, all of a sudden your brain will get you back into, we don't want to be that, we don't want to do that, it's not worth it, and you go back to doing the old habit because that's what your brain is comfortable with. This is a scientific fact. So when you want to stop eating chocolate, you can blame it on your brain. <laughs> that's my excuse. Also, chocolate's healthy for you, dark chocolate. It's a food group. But... Not everybody wants to be made well. Those who work in the field of addiction and recovery are familiar with this sort of subconscious resistance. Whatever it is that addicts are trying to give up, be it alcohol, tobacco, drugs, gambling, overeating, sexual compulsion, you name it. Maybe it's even you're addicted to the couch. It's easy to name, but oh so hard to let go. It's very hard to let go of addiction particularly if it's a drug, like alcohol, tobacco, whatever, because it gets into our system, and our brain says we need it. It's the monkey now on our back. A wise person has said the other side of I can't, I can't do this and I can't do that. I can't overcome this. The other side of I can't is God can. God can. Yesterday morning when, I don't know about here in Milford, but I'm sure it was the same because I'm just up, well, out here in Frenchtown because in Milford we're not that far away. Yesterday morning when I woke up early in the morning, there was fog and it was cloudy skies. The town of Milford was surrounded by it, but it did not stop the people from their routine. They still, people were going out, taking a walk, cars were going up and down. Is it, it's easy for people of faith to live in a fog. How easy it is to permit a mere cup full of troubles to cloud our vision 
and dampen our spirits. Think about it. So this man for 38 years had a physical problem, but there are some who have an emotional problem. There are some who have, um, it could be a mental illness. But there's some of us, it could be spiritual. And it, couldn't, it doesn't need to be so, um, so large as an addiction or uh, a physical ailment. It could be just that you're holding on to anger against another person. You're holding on to a hurt because to let it go and forgive is, is just doesn't fit right because being angry with that person and avoiding that person is so much easier now part of our routine. Or we are angry at God and so we don't come to church. Um, we don't pray anymore because what's the use? We get into these fogs, people of faith. How easy it is to permit a mere cupful of troubles to cloud our vision and dampen our spirits. On my Facebook page, I shared a post that said, if you think you have blown God's plan for your life, rest in this. You, my beautiful friend, are not that powerful. What we imagine in our darkest fears can to be our moment of supreme weakness, our hour of failure, which that could be what ails us, failure, abandonment, despair, actually can prove to be our turning point. The moment we manage at long last to still the clamoring voices in our head and hear only one voice, only one voice, the voice of our Savior, that says, stand up, take your mat, and walk. In just a little while, we're going to do our healing service, where you have the opportunity to come up and be anointed and ask for God's healing. Now, I don't know what you might be wanting to be healed. It could be a hurt. It could be anger. It could be disappointment. It, whatever it is, it could be spiritual, it could be emotional, it could be physical, mental, well, mental is physical, really. Whatever it is you wish to be healed, you're going to have that moment. And just, just as Jesus says, stand up and take your mat, Jesus also looks at you and says, do you want to be made well? See, you may come forward, but unless you truly want to be made well, nothing is going to happen. You have to truly turn yourself over to God. Because what we can't do, God can. Let us pray. Oh Lord, as Jeremiah cried out, is there no bomb in Gilead? We know there is a bomb in you. And just as that man who was it, laid on the side of that pool for so many years had the joyous blessing of Jesus appearing before him, help us to realize we have that opportunity every day that Jesus stands before us and says, do you want to be made well? And all we have to do is say, yes, Lord, make me whole. And it is done. So, Lord, as we come forward, we ask that you hear all of our prayers, for we pray them in the name of Christ. Amen.
Let us stand and say what we believe in the affirmation of our faith. So if you are able, please stand. And it's here and it's there, so here we go. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Yes. She's in the hospital. Anybody else? Yes. going to add the family of May to service today. Anyone else? Any joys? People of Buffalo. Anybody else? Y yes. What 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 are their names? Aubrey and Graham. Yes, in the back. Yes. others and of course our prayers with this world Ukraine and with our own country okay <coughs> let us come before God in prayer most holy and gracious God whose mercy is beyond our comprehension whose love is is beyond our comprehension. We come before you with our prayers. We pray for healing, O oh Lord, for those who are in the hospital. We pray for Susan and Nick and Greg. And we pray for Fran, who's going to be taken off life support, and so we'll be coming home with you. We ask, O oh Lord, these people feel your loving arms around them and feel your love, particularly for Fran, that she knows as she leaves this world, she is going to a joy beyond our understanding. We pray for David, who is facing radiation treatment, healing hands upon him as well. We pray for all who, Lord, who suffer in any way, body, mind, and soul. We lift them up to you, for you are the great healer. Only you know how to heal 
everyone. Only you know the healing they need. So we who trust you so much, put those we love in your healing hands. We pray for those who grieve for those families in Buffalo, for the family of May who gather this afternoon to celebrate her life. We know, O oh Lord, that those who leave this world and go home to you are knowing a peace and a joy beyond our understanding, but the, the hole that is left in our hearts is unbearable. So we are the ones who need comfort, Lord. We are the ones who need to remember that this time on earth is just a passing moment, that our real home is with you. So give comfort to those who mourn, who mourn not only the loss of family members or d beloved friends, but also the loss of good health. Those who've lost their faith, for those who might have lost their jobs, there's all kinds of losses, oh Lord. Loss of relationships, loss of hope. So we pray for all who are experiencing losses. We pray for peace in this broken world, broken at our own hands. And Lord, we're not sure how to put it back together. And we cannot do it without your help. We are called to be your peacemakers, and we want to be your peacemakers. Help us to be loving to each other and kind and compassionate as you call us to be, to be forgiving. But, O oh Lord, we pray for this world, for the horror that's happening in the Ukraine. We pray for all countries, including our own, that peace may prevail, that your will will prevail, that the leaders of all countries and towns and cities and even churches will seek the will of you and will seek what is best for the people they serve instead of their own concerns and their own wills. We lift up this church in the search committee as they discern who is the person you've already planned to bring to this congregation and lead them in being the church of Jesus Christ. We pray for each person on that committee that their spirit is open to your spirit and that the time be shortened so that this church may have the person you have called to lead them. And now we come with our joys, O oh Lord, the joy of Aubrey and Graham who've married, all who are in love. We we give you thanks for all graduates who now are leaving high school and colleges, for the joys that of uh, new babies, new beginnings, the blessings of our food on our plate and homes and clothes on our backs, the blessings of each other in this congregation. We come before you giving thanks, O Lord, for your many blessings. And now here are silent prayers, those that we pray for our concerns, but also the prayers of thanksgiving. Here now are silent prayers. O Lord, as we offer our prayers and hear the birds singing, we are reminded that you are the creator, we are the creature, and that you love us and your mercy is upon us, and we thank you. We have offered all these prayers in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us so long ago to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. robe I have to hold on to. I'm going to ask Bill to come up. Yeah. Empty this. Oh, that's glass. That's good. No, okay, well, I'm reading all this other stuff first. Jesus said, ask and it will be given, seek and you will find, knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks it will be open. Through Christ we have been forgiven and found, found reconciliation with God. Therefore we are called to open our hearts to forgiveness, to be forgiven and to forgive. Let us seek healing through forgiveness, wholeness through rep repentance, and reconciliation through the grace of Jesus Christ. Friends, as Jesus said, do you want to be made well? And if so, I invite you forward to receive an anointing of healing. Bring with you what ails you, whether it's physical, mental, or spiritual, or emotional, and find healing in Christ when they come forward to read that. So anyone who wants to come forward, please do so. Don't, don't be shy. Just come forward.
source of all healing. In Jesus Christ, you heal the sick and mend the broken. Come upon all who seek your healing touch that they may find peace in you. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive your power into our lives and to trust in your eternal love as we wait and hope for the coming of that day when crying and pain shall be no more. We pray in the promise of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. gorgeous. I'm going to try to talk after that. God has been so gracious to us, giving us each other, giving us this opportunity to worship together. 
God has been generous. And I want to thank the two of you, because what would be worship of God without music? At least for me and my, my, my being, the way I worship God. Thank you. Thank you. Because there are many ways to worship God, and music for me is one of them. And I thank you for your leadership of worship through your music, both of you. Thank you so much. Um, and so God has been gracious. So I think I want to remind everybody that with that thought in Thanksgiving to give back to God, the offering plates are in the back. So, uh, and I'm being serious here. We need to thank God. The only way we can continue and further the ministry of Jesus Christ through this church and this community and throughout the world is through our gifts to God. So I want to remind you of that. So as you leave this place, go in peace. Go knowing that all you have to do is ask and it will be given. To seek and you will find. To knock and the door will be open to you. And may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen.